All right. Good morning, everybody. All right, thank you for uh, showing up at uh, actually 8 o'clock, not, not, not 7 o'clock, but it is a full day of presentations uh, for our largest graduating class ever for the uh, department of so We're pretty excited about that, uh, but um, I know some of you are here for specific presentations, but, but uh, hopefully all of these presentations are going to be pretty interesting. Uh, I've sat through a few of them on dry runs. Uh, Dr. Cupin sat through all of them on dry runs, and he assures me that they're all awesome. All right. With that, we'll go ahead and uh, get the program underway. Uh, because our first team looks like they are ready to go. And uh, Mr. Dave Eller will be uh, introducing our first team. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell. I'd like to introduce Trent Gunn and Clyde Harper and Brian Hunt. They're in advanced manufacturing majors and they're gonna tell you about their project. So uh, Trent's gonna lead off. Will you go, Trent? Good morning. Uh, our senior project was to design a dust collection system for the XYZ router that's located in the Applied Engineering Center here at USA. So what does CNC mean? CNC stands for Computer Numerical Control. Uh, computers play a huge part in this. Uh, CNC systems in modern day are a component designed for highly automated use, computer-aided design, and computer-aided manufacturing programs. Uh, here's a picture of the CNC router itself. This, the entry crane actually moves uh, left to right across the whole table. And then this cutting tool moves in three directions, the X, Y, and Z axis. Some of the software you can use are things such as CAM, CAD, and SOLIDWORKS. Uh, the objectives of our senior design was to design a desk collecting system for the CNC router, as well as find the flow to success successfully handle all the debris, such as wood, plastic, some types of metals, and also find the flow capacity all throughout the AC desk collection system, and find a way for the hose to move with the cutting tool without getting binded up or restricting the cutting tool. This is the desk collection system that's currently installed at the AC. It's a stern vent, and it's got a capacity of 4,000 CFN. And as you can see here, this pipe here is what is coming from the AC, where it's collecting, and then it goes into this filter and drops into that barrel. <clears throat> this is the CNC uh, XYZ Techno Router, and it's what our project is based off of, and it's one of the machines that will be if this project is implemented, it will be connected to the desk collection system. This is the table saw. It's another machine that's connected, and you can see this hose that runs all the way along. That's where it, the pickup is actually going to take place. The panel saw, you see the black hose, that's where it's being collected. And this is the combination router, and it just comes out of the trench and connects to the back side, and that's where it's collected. Another part of the system is this gate. This gate was installed to control the flow for the whole system because of the capacity of 4,000. It's uh, too high than what we're using right now, so that's where the remainder of it's going. And this picture is taken from the floor up because it's located about 10 feet off of the floor. So before we could do a line balancing uh, system for this, we had to determine the flows that are currently at each machine uh, right now. And to do that we used an a anemometer and what that does is it measures the velocity in feet per minute and then you multiply that by the area of the pickup, the pickup tool and that will give you your, your flow in cubic feet per minute. So at the CNC router, which is where our product is based, you have 444 CFN. At the table saw and the panel saw we have about six to eight, and then at the combination router you have 470. Um, so if you can see the velocities from there, 
The CNC router and combination router have above 6,000, and I will get to later, that's a too high of a velocity than what's required for the material that we're going to be cutting. And then the table saw and panel saw are extremely low for the material that's going to be handled. Uh, this is a, min a minimum transport velocity chart. We got this from the 2011 ASHRAE handbook, and this pretty much states what velocities you need to collect different kinds of material. And after talking to the AC coordinator, Kevin Nelson, we determined that the material that's going to be used at the AC is going to fall under the added industrial dust category. So the minimum transport velocity in feet per minute is 3,500. So what we did to get the required flow that we need to each, each machine, we multiplied that 3,500 velocity, required velocity, by the area, and that gives you the flow that you would need at each machine. So at the CNC router, we used um, the area of our pickup tool that we designed, which we'll get to later. And for that, you would need a flow, or a, a flow of 175 CFM. For the table saw, you need 255. The panel saw, 176. And the combination router, of about 250. Uh, you'd also need to maintain that velocity, that 3,500 minimum, when it gets at the gate as well. That way, when it gets to that main pipe, the dust doesn't just settle, and that pipe can sit, and sit at the bottom. So to keep the flow up there, you'd have to have 2700 CFM approximately. This is just a flow diagram of how it's pretty much set up. So all these machines, these are the machines that are connected, and it's all ran back into this main pipe, and that's where the gate is. And then it goes out into the actual stern bin, which is the dust collection system. So you need a high flow at the gate, which was 2700, but being that all these machines are running through that gate, you can subtract the CFMs from each machine from that 2700 to get what you actually need the gate to read. And once you do that, you get a CFM of about 1890 is what you would need to read at the gate. Uh, this is the, fit, the first pickup tool design. As you can see, this is the cutting tool part of the router. So this, this spindle here holds the tool. So our design was to fit over that spindle and then on the other side of it is where our hose would connect and that's where the collection would be taking place. So for the first tool, we need a diameter at the top of, or radius of 2.38 inches to fit over that spindle. And the spindle would come down, or the spindle and cutting tool would come down right here. And then our hose would connect to that piece right there. And this whole pickup tool is designed to be made out of acrylic. And the total pickup area for this tool, we were collecting from the whole bottom, which was six inches by 9.25 inches. And that gives you a total pickup area in square feet of 0.2778. So you multiply that pickup area by your 3,500 velocity, or the feet per minute of minimum velocity that you need, and you get a CFM of 971. Uh, the problem with this that we ran into is the piping that we're connecting to our actual pickup tool, it's going to be a transition to a three inch nominal size. And the velocity there is going to increase to almost 20,000 feet per minute. The problem with this is our, the system that's currently installed, it's not capable of that kind of velocity. So we had to design a second pickup tool. So with the second pickup tool, it's all the, pretty much the same dimensions. Uh, what's going to happen is these, this first section here is going to connect it's going to stay connected to the router itself. And then there's going to be magnets between that. So the bottom part will snap on and off. And what we did to reduce the pickup area was we inserted this. It's just insert and it's also made out of acrylic. It's 5.25 by 8.5 inches and it's a depth of 1.5 inches. So as you can see here, after putting this insert in, we greatly reduced the pickup area because before we were collecting in this whole area here and now this, the cutting tool is going to come here and you're going to entrap the dust and debris in those gaps. So that greatly reduced our pickup area and at the bottom, this area here, that's represented to, that's going to be uh, brushed bristles. They're going to be an inch to an inch and a half. 
And we did that because we, are design we designed this pickup tool for up to one inch depth cuts. So as you can see, after we put this insert in, we greatly reduced the pickup area to 0 0.05 square feet. So for that, to meet that 3,500 feet per minute velocity, you would need 165 cubic feet per minute there. And then once you hit that transition to the three inch nominal piping, like I talked about earlier, you're gonna have a velocity of 3,300. So that doesn't quite meet the minimum, and you'd rather be above the minimum than below it. So what we did was we increased the the flow at the pickup tool of 175, which that would increase the velocity in the three inch nominal transition to 3,500. This is our stain that we designed and built. The reason we built the stain is so the vacuum hose and ducting can move with the gantry train as it moves in XYZ directions. It is placed 20 inches away from the table because that gantry train sticks out 14 inches and I put it at Add another six inches just to be on the safe side. It could be moving around. It's going to be bolted to the ground for stability and support. We designed it to be eight feet tall, which would help it move with the hose and the gantry crane. The arm sticks out five feet to minimize flexible hose. And the reason you want to do that is because flexible hose can cause static electricity, which can cause a fire later on. We installed get gussets that are 12 inch by 4.5 inch to add support to the base of the beam and the uh, base plate. We use aluminum 6061 tubing, T-alloy. We use this because of the lightweight but durable. Example is a bicycle frame. Uh, it has a 40,000 PSI minimum yield strength, which yield strength is the stress that could be put on the material without it becoming permanently deformed. We also had a machine, a steel bracket and a steel insert. The steel insert was installed because if you had a steel bolt and this aluminum tubing, it would work a hole in it and it wouldn't work as well. This is a picture of our design of our bracket. It's welded to our stand to hold our arm at the right height. Uh, here, there's a steel spacer we had to design for our swivel that we added later. This will be welded to our stand, and the bracket will be welded to that to uh, make up for our distance needed. This is our steel insert design. This flat part goes in the bracket, and this round part is goes in the aluminum tubing like a sleeve, and this part is a blockage, so it won't go in too far. We calculated the uh, bending stress of the arm at 25, 23, 25 PSI. The reason for that is we want to make sure with all the weight added to it. And like I said before, uh, aluminum can withstand 40,000 PSI. We also calculated the deflection with the same weights. We calculated that at four inches. So from this horizontal piece, it deflects four inches. Also calculated was the bending stress of the base of the beam at 30, or 318 PSI, and it can withstand 36,000 PSI. This is our spiral ducting that's in the trench. It is four inch nominal. We had to elbow up through the trench, which you can kind of see here, and then run it to our table, down the table, to our stand. Once to the stand, we have a four inch ducting going up, and this is a four inch uh, ball swivel, and then reduces to three inch here. This is a three inch ball swivel, and this is all flexible hooves. Uh, we had to get the spacing right, because you have to have the center of the pipe with the center of your bolt, and if you don't, uh, it won't rotate right or pivot right. And with these, adding these, we had to add those spacers, and then we added we designed this bracket for a two inch gap. So that could be welded to your stand and then you could attach the hose to the bracket and it will be a tight fit. This is a picture of our steel swivel. It has a 27 degree angle. This would be used here and there. The four inch would just pivot at the 360. 
and the three inch would do the same thing, but do it at the angles, the hose move with the canchy crane, so it would be easier. This is a picture of the top view of our table and stand. This is our stand. This is a vertical pipe coming up our column. This is our arm, and that's the radius that the arm shows. This is the hose, and this is the gantry crane. So where this hose and crane meets is where this points. The hose would have to move. For the economic analysis for this project, we had to come up with a uh, manufacturing scenario because the, our project is based at the AEC, so it's not in a manufacturing plant, so it's just used for labs and projects. Uh, so this is just uh, the contractor's quote, and the contractor quoted us $1,347, and of that, 456 of it was just for the line balancing that I talked about earlier. This is the stand breakdown. We built the stand ourselves. So this is just the part breakdown for what we used to build this stand. And that was a total of $337. And then the pickup tool, we didn't get to complete because of the velocity issue we ran into. But this is the, the, all, the pro, or all the parts that you would need to build this. And that's a total of $52. And then the estimated labor with us three working and then our supervisor and then our consultant is a total of 3480 for labor. So that brings the total of our project to $5,216. So in a manufacturing uh, plant that operates on a normal 40 hour a week schedule, uh, because of no collection to this, this machine, you have to stop approximately 30 minutes a day just to, to clean out around your cutter so you could continue working and see what you were doing. Uh, so that's, 30 minutes a day doesn't seem like a lot, but that's two and a half hours every week. And if you're producing parts at a rate of 15 parts every hour, you're losing out on approximately 38 parts every week just because of this cleanup downtime. And if you're selling these parts at $20 a profit, that's $760 uh, just because of this two and a half hours of downtime just to clean. And so with, if you implement our design, the cost of that would be $5,216, but you'd be recovering that $760 loss every week from that, that downtime, to clean that downtime. So this project would pay itself off in approximately seven weeks. And it's just a simple payback chart or graph. And so as you can see, every week you're regaining that $760, and then at week seven is when you break even. This is a picture of me drawing. It's basically just a solid model that we built on SolidWorks. And we just imported that into a picture of the Techno Router, just so you can get a rough idea of what this looks like. Uh, it will not be located where it is at on this picture, because we couldn't figure out how to get it over there, but it just gives you a rough idea, like I said. Uh, before, there was a big table that the computer sat on. And this had to go because of where our stand was gonna be put. So we, we got a new computer stand. It's a lot more compact. It's also located right next to the e-stop. Just in case something were to go wrong, you could hit that e-stop and shut it down. You also need a warning sign put on this techno router for when you're cutting metal. Uh, you have to take off that uh, pickup tool because you don't want to be picking up the metal because it could cause a fire inside the tubing. Uh, to conclude, we designed a stand that safely collected dust and debris from the top of the CNC router in the AEC here at USI, and also designed a dust collecting balancing system to maximize efficiency. Uh, some of the recommendations we have is to balance the entire flow up in the AEC of the dust collection system and reduce the flow capacity for just what we need up there instead of having too much, and also the pickup tool needs to be completed because we did not get around to uh, building that and the, con the contractor needs to come finish the building. Uh, we would like to give a special thank you to Professor Eller, uh, Professor Kevin Nelson, Dr. Zane Mitchell, Chair, Donna Moore, and Justin Amos who helped us build a lot of this. 
Also suppliers and contractors like Ride Steel, Evansville Sheet Metal, Lowe's, and Midwest Mechanical. With that, we'll take your questions. Gentlemen, how is the dust collected now at the XYZ router? It's not. Well, it, it is by shop back. So that's why this is needed. So we're not shop backing it every time you're cutting a material. My question is uh, based on your pickup tool final design, a lot of times those are adjustable in height so that they're uh, very close to the material you're cutting. Have you thought of putting that into consideration in your design at all, or um, based on your design, is that kind of not necessary? Uh, we were told to design this for a one-inch depth cut, and being that it's just a design, we made it to where whoever goes in and builds that can change the height of the bristles to adjust for that depth cut. Your swivel joints on the hose, are those uh, commercially available or is that something that would have to be custom made? They're gonna be through a contractor. We found a four inch online through a company, but the three inch is a specially made product. <coughs> For the flexible hose, uh, what material will that be made out of? Just a standard vacuum hose is what we had an idea for. So, so plastic? Yeah. <laughs> My other question is on the, swivel, the ball swivels, is there any chance of material getting stuck in those swivels and so dust or material gets stuck in there, is that going to render the um, arm and everything inoperable? It could because it's pretty much like a ball valve head with the outer piece and there's an inner piece and it swivels in there. You go like clean it out. I didn't really look into that. If you're going to use corrugated uh, vacuum hose, do you guys give any consideration to uh, the noise level? No. Let's give them a hand. 